Welcome to season four, more or less, my friends. We are back at it with new guests, new conversations, and honestly, renewed energy all around. I am so freaking excited to share this episode with y'all. Hunter Hayes is with us. Truly the most wholesome, grounded guy. You may know him from Grammy-nominated song Wanted or his new fully independent album Red Sky. He's wrapping up the final dates of the Red Sky tour, and it's a show you do not want to miss. Seriously, y'all, he plays for two hours, and every second is incredible. During our conversation, Hunter shares some really special anecdotes and life lessons we all can appreciate, more or less. On More or Less, we are all about feeling good and looking good. So we're excited to tell you about our sponsor, Mind Plus Beauty. Season 4 is sponsored by the unique and innovative products of Mind Plus Beauty whose science-based unisex approach to wellness and skincare will help you do just that. These dual-action facial oils are designed to help you take care of yourself and get more of what you need, sleep, energy, calm, focus, or uplift, while also being great for your skin. For my friends that gua sha or use a jade roller, Mind Plus Beauty's simple-to-use products are the way to go. They work across most skin types to protect the skin, reduce inflammation, and provide an all-natural approach to wellness. So whether it's a deeper, more restful night's sleep, an energy boost for busy days, a calmer state of mind, increased concentration, or a more positive mood, Mind Plus Beauty's products are designed to help you look and feel your best all day, every day. So if, like us, you like to both look good and feel good, visit mindplusbeauty.com to learn more. That's mind, P-L-U-S, beauty.com. Hunter, welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks for, for me. coming by. So yeah. on our show, we have guests introduce themselves, so okay. feel free to give your own variation of an intro. Yeah. My name is Hunter Hayes. I'm a singer-songwriter and uh, musician, performer. I'm whatever it takes to get my music out. <laughs> TikToker. <laughs> TikToker, I like that. Advocate, you know, awesome. all of the above, yeah. Awesome. Human first. Human sometimes first, sometimes <laughs> very last, yeah. And our show is centered on one question, which <clears throat> is, in this moment, how are you feeling more or less? I'm feeling good. It's really cool to be back in the city. I haven't been here since uh, last time I saw you here. We were uh, releasing my last album wow. on release So it's day. been a minute. It's been four years, yeah. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Feels good. Yeah, I love, I love this city. There's such a great energy to it. There's just a lot of energy, a lot of energies, you know? Yeah. So it's good to, and also it feels like, it doesn't feel like album promo until you're in New York and stressed out. <laughs> then it's like, all right, I'm putting on an album. It's real now, you know? And what number coffee are you on today? Not, no, only, um, I guess this is three. Three? Technically. Okay, we'll take it. And a five-hour energy. Yeah, I don't know if I could say that, but endorse me, please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. We'll, we'll send it to the powers that be. Please, please, please. And the follow-up, Hunter, is what do you need more of and what do you need less of? Could be a feeling, word, emotion. <clears throat> I need more time making music and, and not in the album sense. I'm really grateful that the album's done. I'm really proud of it. Of course, there's, you know, 50 more songs that I want to do and put out, but that's another story. But um, I, don't know, I, I just, I need more time playing music. I'm excited to get on the road because I haven't done that, like a tour in a long time. And um, less of, uh, making TikToks. Let's just <laughs> fucking be real about it. <laughs> we can be real. We can get into that. I, I feel like 99% of our interviews on the show now have turned into, how do you Therapy feel about sessions. content creation? <laughs> and what do you want to vent about? And what are we not going to tell the label that we said? Uh, so that- The good news is I am the label, so. Uh, you are the boss. So We're going to get into that. We can really stick it to the man here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you are making your own system. That. Yeah, oh, of course great. you can say that. Okay. We're unfiltered on here. Love it. Um, so more time making music. So with this project, the album that is now out in the world, Red how Sky. long has it been done and completed? Like how long have you been sitting on this? Barely any time. Really? I, yeah, I've finished. I, I stressed my team out so much because I was just like, we need to put out music. And they're like, we'd love to hear it first. And I was like, no, give me a release date. Um, and, uh, yeah, not necessarily the most conducive way to work, but I just didn't want to like, I didn't... I wanted people to stay, I wanted to be more real time with the process of the album. 
because I hadn't figured out all of it when I put the first two singles out, but I, I, I was kind of like okay with that for a second. And then I, you know, said like, oh, these two songs won't be on the album. And then I flipped the script later and I was like, no, they should be. They need to be. They're part of it. Yeah. Um, but I like, I finished the last mix in February, late February, early March, wow. something like that. Wow, that's, yeah. that's very impressive. <laughs> so are you the kind of person that doesn't want a deadline? Like you're... I actually do better with deadlines. We believe people become the best versions of themselves when their minds and body are in the right place at the right time. Do you ever feel like our health needs to be scheduled into our day? Our morning coffee, our supplements, our skincare? We're limited on the products that help us maintain a balanced lifestyle in a healthy, easy, and convenient way. Our friends at Neuro did exactly that by putting nutrients that enhance your health and wellness into something intrinsically convenient, affordable, and portable. Gum and mints. Formulated with B vitamins and natural caffeine, Energy and Focus provides the mental endurance necessary to stay focused on your goals. If you're looking for a steady state of mind, Neuro's Common Clarity products use vitamin D3 to optimize composure in the moments we need it most. For those that know me, I've been hyping up Neuro for quite some time, and I'm thrilled to partner with them for another season of More or Less. Neuro is always by your side when you need it. Take my word for it and head to getneuro.com now. I heard early on that Coldplay would be two albums ahead. They know what's yeah. going to be on the next album. They know three albums ahead. I've heard Chris talk about how like currently right now he was like, I think he laid out four more albums from them in an interview that he did with a fan recently. And I just, I, I and I, but I heard about this like 12 years ago and fell in love with that. I was like, I love that way of working because <clears throat> it gives me the opportunity to work on something creative without any pressure, without any expectation, et cetera, et cetera. It's just like you get to just be in the music that you're making while in this, like, cause it's two totally different mindsets mm -hmm. to make something be creative and then go promote it and tour it and talk about it. You sort of like create this safe space for yourself to, to create. And then you, you sort of put on this suit of armor when you're a, about to, you know, share your deepest heart, soul feelings, experiences with the world. And so um, I was kind of like working that way from it. I mean, half of this record was supposed to be on another, on another record. Um, okay. And um, yeah, so I, I like both and I love having the space to just splatter paint, but there's nothing that I, I but I also need something to look forward to. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I ask for like, hey, when's the best window that we have? Because that's also like, you get so fucking conditioned to that when you work with a label. Like they'll literally, it doesn't matter where you are in your project. They'll tell you, listen, listen, we got a week in September that we can put your album out. And if you don't make that week, you're not getting an album out the next year. And it's, so I kind of got conditioned to that. And so now I kind of like, I ask for certain deadlines so that I can stay on task, knowing that I have the diva card to pull any time to say, nope, not ready, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But that's also why I ask because I feel like so many artists, the projects tend to evolve, but in the same vein, they're like, oh, I was done with that a year ago and I was in a completely different headspace and now I have to go promote it and get back to that headspace that I yeah. was when I wrote it. So are you enjoying this time of now having it out in the world? I'm loving it because like, I think this project, <sighs> these songs came from, um, you know, speaking about the label and, and the, a lot of these songs are about the industry, <laughs> even though they're dressed in relationships and, um, and a lot of it's about self-worth and stuff like that. So I think the message that the album told me, it wasn't like I went and wrote a record about a relationship mm -hmm. or, you know, anything like that. Like it's very, <clears throat> it's like looking in a mirror or watching back, watching playback of some of my deepest sort of like human lessons about like self-worth and art and just my place in the world. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually really loving now, after living and writing it, now I get to live it from a, no trust me, it gets better standpoint. Mm. And I think that the whole album kind of has that spirit anyway. And it's very uplifting. Thank you for saying that. And it, and it does feel, it, 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 it is, for me, it has been uplifting. But I think it was tough to see that in the midst of writing it and being in it, because you tell yourself it's gonna be okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, you really just hope that you're going to experience that it's going to be okay. And then once it is and you experience it and you live it, then you get to go tell other people like, you know, there's good news, you know? Yeah, yeah and there's so many lyrics on the project where I, I was listening to it and I was like, it just feels like you found that freedom in yourself. That's the message that resonates with me as the audience, as the listeners. Like, 
I feel like he just feels really proud and really excited for the next chapter. And that translates in the music, which I don't know if that's what you intended to do, but it totally comes through. Thank the you for saying that. And thank you for spending time with it, too. I really of appreciate course. it. Awesome. Um, Missing you is my bop. It's my nice. new jam. Nice. I love that. Um, I, I'm really grateful to hear that. I think it was both intentional and un unintentional. I think, you know, you can, because I did, right? Like I knew what I, I knew what I wanted Red Sky to be. Originally, it was just like the evil twin to my last album, which was Wild Blue. Yeah. Wild Blue was just like trying to bust through some sort of barriers and boundaries. And, and this was like where I put all the stuff that I knew I wasn't going to put on, I wasn't going to be able to put on Wild Blue. But then it became this sort of place to write about the things that I didn't feel like I could write about or, you know, go areas that couldn't, didn't feel like I could go into. Um, Red Sky became the safe place to go and like live, feel, experience all those things. And, um, I think it kind of like it, 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 and it's, I, I've always sort of like, I don't know, laughed at judged artists who are just like, oh, it's just the universe. And it's just, you know, but I really fucking believe that. I really do. I love how Rick Rubin put it in his book recently. Only book I've ever like read the whole thing of, by the way. <clears throat> um, but I just love how it, it, it just feels so true because like I'm always writing about my own feelings, but they're not always necessarily like autobiographical mm. in that like there's some things I didn't live that exact experience, but it doesn't just change the fact that I'm feeling or like empathizing or like um, feeling on behalf of someone, you know what I mean? I'm a big feeler. And so I think a lot of this record was just like diving into that and just letting the songs write themselves. And that became the, the, the story. And you know, the, like the, the independent part, like talking about being independent was something I didn't, I was afraid to talk about for a while. Um, and then I realized that's the most powerful part of this whole fucking story. Yeah. And I want people to hear that. And I'm, I am proud of it. I'm proud of it. It's nice to own it. Yeah. Uh, but it's also nice to just have ownership of my voice and to not, and to be able to stand in the room and, and like, you know, I made a decision to pull two songs off the album. They'll go somewhere. Um, but everybody was like, why, why, why? And I was like, it's just not right. And to know that I can do that um, is very liberating and freeing. Yeah. What does pressure look like now for you now that you're independent? Is it pressure on yourself or is it le like, is there less pressure coming from now that you don't have as many parties on a label side? I think I'm putting more pressure on other people now. Interesting. It's way less on me. Because I, you're the boss. Well, I don't, I, and I don't necessarily see it that way. I see it as I, I am, I'm a partner. I play a role. I have my role. Um, and I, I, I make, you know, the effort to do the role that only I can play. Mm-hmm and show up for those roles, whatever those are. And at the same time, I think, thank God therapy helped me um, sort of untangle my relationship with my worth in a in you know connection with the numbers of things. I wanna see numbers, I want results. But I think business hunter is a very different hunter from creative me, yeah. you know? Um, and I think it, it's allowed me to see like, if something's not going well or if something needs work on, um, it's just seen as part of running a business versus, oh my God, the song's not good. It's like, no, I feel great about the song. It's good. And we'll figure it out. You know, if we're missing people, you know, if, you know, those kind of things are the things that I put pressure on. It's like, okay, well, if we're not reaching the right people, then we got to figure out how to reach the right people. That, yeah. That's a simple equation to fix. And it's a fixable thing. I think everything now too, I just see as a fixable thing. It's like, all right, let's figure it out. Let's diagnose it. Let's address it and let's find the solution. Let's get creative, you know, but, um, I think I'm putting a little bit, is that, is that true? Am I being accurate? Am I putting less pressure on myself? I don't know. I am harder on myself in some ways as far as like, I want my performances to improve and I want, you know, I, I want to keep growing yeah. in every category. So in that way, I'm definitely hard on myself. Um, but yeah, I think the pressure is more outward now. Yeah. I believe we can be equally like our biggest advocate, but our biggest self-critic too. 100%. Like it's a, it's a balance. I can't watch videos after a show. Yeah. Can't do it. No. Never? I mean, if I'm like intoxicated, <laughs> then maybe I'll I'll venture into watching videos or um because you'll be hypercritical. Oh yeah. Yeah. Be hyper I like to the point of like I never want to sing again. Like it'll it'll get that weird, right? Yeah. Um but when I walk off stage, I, I wanna if I feel proud, I'm just like, that's it. I did it, I was there, everyone else was there and now I'm on to the next thing. Yeah. That was also a moment that will never happen again. As cliche right. as that sounds, that was one moment in time that will 100%. never be replicated again. 
Yeah. So how are we solving the problem of making TikToks? <laughs> Where are we at with that? What is I, Hunter Hayes take on making TikToks in 2023? Okay. So here's the thing. So I told my team like, as we're, she's filming this for a TikTok. <laughs> I promise you. Are we going to make a TikTok out of this very moment? This is my manager, Val. Um, also my best friend. So that's confusing. Um, I told everybody to leave me alone while I was making the record. I was like, I can't be creative and like armored looking at comments in TikTok. It's not a safe place for me. Um, so I was kind of like tiptoeing into it. And then, you know, I realized, you know, after I finished mixing and mastering all the tracks, the existential crisis of like, what is my fucking purpose now? Um, I was like, you know what? I like new things. I like learning new things. I enjoy videography. I paid for my first Pro Tools rig. I was in middle school and I was a wedding videographer. I was Heck a yeah. 12 year old with a steady cam rig. So like I enjoy videography. I enjoy production. Like I love this room. Um, and I've had something like this in my basement. Um, and I enjoy lighting and set design and all those things. So I was, you know, I was like, I have an opportunity. I went on vacation. Like I took a week just trying to clear my mind and I didn't do a good job. But uh, I came back and I was like, okay, you know what? I want to treat it like a new thing to learn. I love learning new things. And I want to, and I, I love creative things and I love all the things around this. So let me just do what brings me joy. So I'm currently in this sort of seesaw between like, I'll make stuff that like brings me life and brings me joy and I, that I enjoy. Um, and I, I think I've just got to like guard my heart against like bringing it to, you know, it, it's, it's not going to be trendy things. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll get a list of suggested things and they're very trendy and they're brilliant suggestions because I work with brilliant people and their patience with me is also just like at a, at a level that's impossible to achieve anywhere else. <laughs> I have to give them credit. Um, so I'm just learning sort of like, it's always this sort of tug of war. Like this is the trendy thing. This is the thing that's going to work. And early on, you know, our approach was like, it doesn't matter if it's trendy. It doesn't matter if it works. It doesn't matter. Numbers don't matter as much as me just showing up and people seeing me. Mm, so like, like a visibility thing. Right. Well, just just a, a, me feeling safe enough to do it was kind of like that is a win in of itself. So I think I, I'm kind of just like f bringing those two things together and finding my alignment, my middle ground. And what you it. relate to. It's just what I love. I'm a nerdy fucking dude. Like yeah. I love studio shit. And like I'm really proud of my like – uh, the fact that we mixed this whole record out of the box, like that's a big deal for me. And like, that's something I really wanted to do because I wanted to sound analog and I wanted it to go through transformers and tubes and experience electricity and get out of the computer as I mixed the project. I wanted it to be old and sound like lived in and not like super hyped and compressed and digital. So, um, so like I love stuff like that and I love instruments and I love just being in my little space, my little studio, you know, that's my happy place. Yeah. And I think, you know, for what it is with social media and TikTok and showcasing who you are and your personality, I think there's space for that to show the nerdy parts of you. It's just a matter of what you feel comfortable with to put yourself out there. But yeah. it's definitely not easy. And I empathize. I know it's an essential part of marketing. We're having to do it too over here with this podcast. <laughs> it is not my favorite thing either. I don't know what that face is because I don't know you very well. <laughs> But I feel like I could make it up very easily. <laughs> what I think that so face I meant. Just, uh, you should totally just like do like a thirty second clip talking into camera. Talking to my iPhone just on the street. Say that the new season's coming, and then just like post it. It's just like, Are you uncomfortable <laughs> talking to yourself in a camera? Hundred percent. Same. Yeah. It's the worst thing to. <laughs> Anybody's like they're they're always like selfie this selfie that, and I'm like I am not. Uh, okay with that oh my god i feel so uncomfortable there's yeah. at least 80 takes of said video that he's talking about <laughs> it's very uncomfortable same yeah i got a lot of drafts uh, a lot of drafts yeah. I, it, and it's taking up precious memory usage on my phone yeah <laughs> i feel that <laughs> but but all to say it, it is an upward climb but i have to believe that there's niches everywhere in this digital landscape that mm -hmm. we will find the pockets that work yeah for sure yeah, I, I, I think that once you're in alignment, things just go. I mean, I've, my one of my therapists, one of my therapists, I hope to God neither one of them see this. <laughs> but, um, one of my therapists is always talking about alignment. And we're just always on the search for alignment. And, um, and I do, I have seen it. And, you know, they say like when you're really aligned with your purpose, your, your thing, 
when you're just in alignment, synchronicity shows up in all kinds of ways. And I have seen that. I've seen the evidence of that. Well, it goes back to what you were saying about the universe. I, I 100% believe that the universe will put you where you're meant to be and, you know, things will turn out the way it's meant to, mm -hmm. even when you don't think so. Yep, totally. Are you, are you a spiritual person? Are you... Yeah, I grew up, I grew up like going to, you know, church every Sunday and uh, Catholic. Okay. Uh, so, you know, confessions and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've since sort of like, I don't know, I've just experienced so much that I've, my, my faith is very different from religion. Yeah. And I've experienced a lot of different people's faith and religion. And I've been surrounded by a lot of different people um, from different, you know, upbringings and different walks of life and different life experiences. So I've been negotiating my, like, because I also really lost a lot of, I think the worst my relationship with faith um, has been, was re has been recently because of so many things that I've seen and experienced and watched people experience. Um, it's been heartbreaking. And I'm like, how does, and you can't, like, it's not one big thing, right? Yeah. So it's so nuanced and complicated that it's hard for me to talk about. Um, and, and that is completely separate of my faith. Right. Like, I know, like, I say... I say prayers of gratitude and I, I, I ask for things. I try to, you know, ask for signs or synchronicities, things like that. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've been really just keeping that together. My faith as an individual, my faith as yeah. a human, I, I'm with you. I, I also grew up Catholic and I think now I, I only ask because we're talking about the universe and I am into like manifestation, but a lot of the things that we talk about on this show is really around like what you're able to control and not control. And ultimately all you can control is yourself. Mm -hmm. So I look at that as the same way as like, I can only control my own views and my own beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I believe in the universe and the powers that be, and it doesn't have to necessarily have a name or a label. Yeah. But maybe there's a higher power, maybe there's not, but I just know <laughs> we're here for a limited time and I am going to, do gratitude prayers and mm -hmm. affirmations and all that good stuff and see where it gets me. I have really started to recently, I guess over the course of making this album, um, came, come to understand, or, or I am deepening my understanding. Another thing that I'm wanting to really learn a lot about um, is that, like I've been watching a lot of Joe Dispenza mm -hmm. material, big fan, and uh, just understanding the science behind the word energy. People throw vibes around all the time, but like vibrations, energy, you know, I think those words get overused in the wrong context. I, I, I really, there's science behind, you know, the, the power that your attitude and your words really truly have over not only your own life, but how it can affect everyone in your path and how everyone in your path can, can affect you. 100%. Yeah. Everything is a chain reaction. There's a musician that I love. Um, she's based in Harlem, but she makes music only in, she calls it the love frequency. I think it's like 240 HQZ. Musicians will know. Two, uh, is it 432? 432. It's one of yeah. the one of the. There's a lot of different theories on different ones, but yeah. that's the one. That so I she only most. makes music in, in that. And when you see her perform live, like you're instantly happy. And I do think there's a science behind that. Just the vibrations and the rhythms in music are able yeah. to affect the human body. 100% believe in that. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's science. I mean, it, it's been proven. We've seen so many studies that um, have actually studied, you know, brainwaves and the results of, and et cetera. Yeah. So I'm going to segue a little bit okay. into, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit, but this project seems, Red Sky seems very genre fluid, if you <laughs> will. <laughs> so how do you identify with a genre or do you not? Are you like, screw genres, I am my own person, do not put me in a box? I had a hard time at the beginning because like, <laughs> I knew that what I wanted to do was different from what I've done, but it wasn't like I was leaving. It wasn't like I was you know, do it a 180. It wasn't like I was rebranding. It wasn't any of the things that I've seen other people do mm -hmm. that were kind of like cautionary tales. And I was like, I don't, that's not what I'm doing. Um, because I also got a, a really massive, it's weird for me to drop this name right now, so I'm not going to drop his name, but there's a really big artist, legendary, like icon artist that sat me down and helped me understand like you're always like, this is always, you're, help me understand like what my core is and how certain things are always going to be part of my core. And I'm really proud of that. And um, this was, so I guess the journey for this album, because I did try to explain it to people and no one got it. And I was just like, well, the, 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 when you hear it, 
Because I could hear it in my head, but it wasn't done yet, you know? Right, right. And I was like, when you hear it, it will make sense. And I mean, you know, I finally had to sort of, I had so many sit downs with the team because like it's all about marketing, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And my wake up call was just like, I'm a singer songwriter. I have always been a singer songwriter since the time I was 12. The time I was six years old, I wrote my first song and I was a singer songwriter. Um, and I played with multiple genres. I, and, and I think at the end of the day, all of my favorite artists um, have made a genre for themselves. And I think that that was my goal with the album. Whether I realized it or not, that was what I had sort of set out to do. That was my goal. That was my mission statement. It became, once I realized that it was my mission statement, I put it on a note. Um, that I share with you know just a handful of people, uh, where I would go and put updates for the for the project, and that was at the top. It was like if Hunter Hayes was a genre, dot dot dot, and that and then I would just keep uploading like updated you know waves and MP3s and things. So um, it was more or less just like me saying like I do a lot of different things. I play in a lot. I play with a lot of different influences and a lot of different genres. And you call it whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. <laughs> like I just like these are things that make me happy. And you know. Hopefully when you hear it, it'll make you happy too. 100%. I really like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Because I feel like over the years, you have experimented with different genres. and But people may associate you as Hunter Hayes, the country singer. Hunter Hayes cross into pop. And people just want to put labels on things. When yeah. ultimately, the project itself is what's cohesive. And mm. it's whatever you associate that to be if you want to put a label on it. But it's good freaking music. So who cares what it falls under? Yeah, thanks for saying that. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I have a great team of people who are great at marketing things, and they're great at figuring out what to call things. And um, but one, once I stopped thinking that way, I think I was able to enjoy the process a bit more and and just be less. Because I, I, you know, for so many years, it was like um, the first conversation I remember having with somebody, and the lesson that I learned from it was a song called "Somebody's Heartbreak." It was on the first album. And the first time I played the demo for the label, they were like, well, we love that, but we could never put that out as a, with you as a country artist. And I was like, why not? And they were like, well, because it has this sound and this sound. And I was like, all right, easy. So I went home, I made a different demo. And they were like, well, it's, it's, it's less pop, but now we don't know what it is. And I was like, cool, I'll keep working on it. And so I went in with Dan Huff and him and I just really dissected every part and every sound and we gave everything a, um, its own sort of like specific sound. And then they heard it and they're like, oh yeah, that should be a single. And like the first time I heard the demo, I was like, that's a hit. Like, and I don't pretend to know what hits are. I just know when something hits me, like it, it feels big, it feels good. And you, you believed know? in it. Yeah, I believed in it. And so we kept, we kept doing that. So I, I, you know, I, I'm not gonna say I did a lot of that, but there were definitely some times where I was just like, oh, can I do that? Can I do this sound? Can I, can I have this influence? You know, what if it scares the people at the label? Etc. Well, you were waiting for permission for your own uh, all art. The time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that must feel so different now, but like liberating. Yeah, it's wild. Oh, that's so amazing. Yeah. I was sitting on the airplane yesterday listening to songs that didn't make the project, and there's this whole, just for funsies, I just made this like 10 song, like, I don't know what you would call it, like emo rock. <laughs> Um, again who cares what it falls under who cares what it <laughs> falls under but it was like it was dark and sad as shit and it was just stuff that's been collected I've written over the course of going through this chapter and it's like the heaviest shit and I was like you know what I should put that out anyway it's dark and it's heavy but somebody needs it you yeah, know? yeah yeah that makes sense yeah. you know it's really awesome yeah so tour's coming up yes and you are hitting the road with some wonderful people shout out to Sam DeRosa who has sat in that very chair we had her Sick. on last season Love her. She's amazing. Love her. One of my favorite people. Yeah. But just an incredible human being. And y'all wrote together on we this did. project, which is fantastic. Yeah. How many writers did you work on with this? Uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, every song, um, except for Wallflower, has at least one other writer. And I think, um, I mean, there's easily 10, 11 writers. Rolo's on a lot of songs on the, on the project. Uh, Frawley's on too. That's why I'm really excited to have her on the Amazing. road too. Amazing. Um, I really, I was excited to have singer songwriters, you know, people who were also like present in their music. Yeah. You know, um, emotionally, because that's I feel like my, I, that's what I love about my audience is like it's a safe place for people to feel and talk and be. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, easily a handful of like ten, 
11. I'm sh- there's more than that, I'm sure. Uh, well, and, and when you count the amount of songs that I've written with people who, you know, the, the songs didn't necessarily make the, this album, this project, this go around. Yeah. But the world will hear them at some point, you know? There's so many people that were willing to give me four hours of their time and let me spill about my life and just like write music about it. Have you always been super collaborative with writing? Yeah. I mean, I, um, I mean, obviously I started by myself in my bedroom, you know, and moved to Nashville and that's where I learned how to write a ro- write a song with another mm-hmm. person in the room. Yeah. Um, so it, it took me a second to get used to, it, but once I got used to it and got comfortable with it and understood, and like, as I've grown as a human, my, you know, I feel like I've, I've grown in the craft of being in the room and being a collaborator as a writer. Um, and I've tried to play different roles too. Like I've been the, the guy at the computer making the track. And then I realized that I wasn't like present for the song. And so I kind of resorted to like, I will never, I will sit at a I will sit on the couch with a laptop with no instruments in my hand. Cause I'll noodle if I have an instrument in my hand. So I have to just sit, um, with the lyric first and sort of like suss that out and figure that out. And the melody kind of follows. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I love being in the room with, other because every i mean just like yeah i mean i'm just i'm thinking of like rollo like the the energy that rollo brings into the room he'll just like he'll walk the, around the room just singing the most iconic and memorable melodies and you're just like all right i gotta figure out what to say to that um and then you know uh just like other people like sam right like i was talking about like my two therapists and she was like honestly start with that and we ended up with a song called normal that starts with it's taken two different therapists to tell me what to do to help me wrestle with etc so and it talks about all my you know cycles as my issues and <laughs> my, that, my, my, my faults so. i am so glad you brought that up because before you walked in the room i said to remy our producer i said remy you know hunter and sam wrote together and like you know they they wrote on this song and the first line is about two different therapists i was like sam is so great and hunter's so great <laughs> she's awesome it's fantastic yeah. i love that yeah. um so with with tour i wanted to bring up i i've been asking artists a lot post pandemic or whatever we want to call about this time. Are there any new boundaries you're setting on the road or any bad habits from previous tours that you're going to break this time around? Mm. How are you overall feeling about getting back? A lot of different health goal goals. I think, um, this is the first time I've toured like this way. Uh, I did it a little, I, what I mean by that is in Nashville, when you, when you're based on Nashville, which I still kind of am, am um, but you, you know, you leave on Wednesday night, you do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday, but typically you're back home doing laundry on Monday, right? And you sort of have a natural break. And I've been so conditioned to that, that it's easy for me to take those days off and not do anything. And this tour is very different. We're doing three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off. So it's a lot. And so I'm trying to get my, my stamina, sort of my, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, endurance. Endurance. Back. Um, also, so I think what that means for me is like creating like intentional breaks during the day. You know, I normally am quite, quite present in the room, building the show before playing the show. And then after, I don't think I'm going to have that luxury this time, which kind of like, I, like, I don't want fans to wait by the bus and be disappointed if I'm like already asleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, just because I'm trying, I do have to rest my voice quite a lot more intentionally on this tour especially it's three days on yeah and i'm 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 used to doing three shows in a row but um so i'm trying to figure that out because i don't want to let anybody down i don't want to disappoint anybody in that in that arena but um it is important to take rest and breaks and so i'm trying to figure that out and renegotiate um but really i think that's my biggest challenge is is learning how to and like giving the discipline the discipline of giving myself a break um I'm like good at it in a lot of other categories. I just love touring. I love everything about it. And uh, I have a tendency to go a little hard, so. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, and I'm sure this has happened, but have you like lost your voice on tour because you've overdone it and? I've, I'm almost nervous to say it, but you know what? I'm putting good vibes out. Um, I, I've only, because I've gotten sick. Okay. Um, and I only, there's only two shows. I don't know that I only have to cancel. I think one, um, maybe two, and maybe I've blocked them from my memory. But, We're gonna knock on wood; it'll never happen again. Well, most of the time, I can still show up and do something. Yeah, and I'll give something. 
if I got to lower all the keys, if I got to change the set list, like I'll do it. If I got to play more solos, you know, I can still deliver a show. And I think that's my, where my commitment come, like comes in handy because it's like, no, 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 I'm still going to show up and I'll do something, you know, I'll, I'll give everything I've got. I'll figure out where it is I can sing and I'll just, I'll focus on that and give them mm -hmm. the best version of that I can. Um, so yeah. And I'm, I don't want to jinx myself, but I, I, but I do think that, um, it's also just about learning like how you push yourself. Cause I definitely pushed myself a lot in the first like 10 years of my career. Um, and just got conditioned to just like really abusing my voice quite a lot, pushing it really hard. Yeah. So, yeah. So Good. now it, it feels like a new chapter, a new era. Yeah. And hopefully you're, I mean, I know you love touring, but hopefully you'll be able to enjoy it even more if you have adequate rest, energy, all the things. And this is the first time that I've been like, you know, with a trainer every day for months, like nice. preparing. I've been singing through the show every night and just making sure I'm comfortable and learning from it. And um, I've never, I don't know that I've ever had the luxury of doing that much prep before a tour like this. So understanding where it is that I can be happy and present and, you know, not creating a show that I'm scared to play. Yeah, you yeah. want to go in in the best headspace you can. Yeah. Because I'm sure on the road, things you have to adapt, things go wrong. It's all how you your mind space approaches it. Yeah, you get thrown a lot of a lot of curveballs. Yeah, for sure. Oh, man. Well, we conclude the show with a final question, which is what is one thing you've done this week, today, perhaps a victory, no pun intended, to take care of your mental health? Hmm. Great question. I haven't done a really good job. <laughs> it's been quite Look dangerous. at that. We're doing, a, we're doing a self check in. <laughs> she went from. I'm going to get this on TikTok to like, oh, I don't want anybody to know that. <laughs> um, honestly, scheduling a break because like we've got rehearsals, we've got a lot of stuff going on. And um, yeah, we had to just sit down and I had to be like, I, I know this is whatever, high maintenance, I, maybe it's not, but I like, I need a day off, like with nothing. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Um, so yeah, that also just like cutting out alcohol, no promises for tonight. Cause my favorite bar is just down the street, but, <laughs> um, drinking a like a, not drinking for weeks at a time has been really helpful. Yeah. Um, cause I'm, you know, on tour, it's, it's quite easy to, cause you're not driving, you're not thinking about anything. You get off stage, you're, you're amped, you know, it's, it's nothing to finish a half a bottle of scotch a night yeah. and just like, that's normal, you know? So proud of not doing that. And also my mental state has been significantly better because of it, you nice. know? Yeah. And I mean, asking for a break is huge. Not enough people do that. And it's good practice for when you're on the road. Yeah, we're so like, you know, just told that like our work ethic is our value and we all just like have to get it done, you know, but yeah, living a sustainable life is so much more valuable and so much more important to me. And so, yeah, that's, yeah. Work, yeah, it's easy work. to fall into operating from zero. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm rather than like re replenishing. And I learned the hard way making this album. Like I burned out every three weeks, like burned out, like I'm done. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, uh, you don't have that luxury, dude. You're like still in the midst of it, you know? So I had to learn how to take breaks intentionally and like, yeah, do that. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Hunter, listen, before we wrap, I have to say this is a very full circle moment for me. So the year is 2015. I am okay. on the school bus. I was bullied a lot as a kid. Okay. Invisible mm. on repeat every day on the bus. We didn't even wow. have iPhones at that point, I don't think. So it's still on my Apple library, like when you downloaded it on the thing. Yeah. Um, so it's still in there uh, in the ether of my phone. But very full circle for me to chit wow. chat with you because that song means a ton to me. Thank you for saying that. Oh, thank you for making it. I'm <laughs> thank, so glad. Thank That's... you for being a voice and speaking up around mental health and just being an advocate and I'm really excited for this new chapter for you. Thank I you. Uh, I sense nothing but good things, good energy. And yeah. thanks for stopping by the show, more or less. Thank you. Thanks Amazing for- Amazing to have you. Thanks for saying that. Thanks for having me. Good to, good to chat with you. Thank you for listening to More or Less with Jess. To learn more about our podcast, head to moreorlesswithjess.com or follow us on Instagram at moreorlesswithjess. Here at More or Less, we talk a lot about affirmations and the power of positivity. 
So we're excited to talk to you about our sponsor, Notes to Self Socks. At Notes to Self, they know that words can make all the difference, so they put affirmations where your brain can see them each and every day, right on your toes. Notes to Self's comfy, marathon-tested socks are made right here in the USA in a variety of colors and sizes for you and all your friends. So if you want to walk a mile in our uplifting footsteps, go to notes2self.com today to order your very own daily dose of positivity. 